Hello there, I'm another Magento dev. In this video we're going to do some work on the PDP. Now I haven't quite figured out whether this could be a series of videos of its own. The amount you can the amount you generally need to do to a product page is quite vast and varied. One of the best ways to demonstrate something is maybe to just add something to the page. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is show you how to add a static block to the product page. We're going to add it to sort of various places and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways of, of doing that. Let's make a start. Right then, as always we start with a layout file. Um, and the layout file in question for the category product page is catalog product view. There. Right, catalog product view is the layout that controls pretty much the entire um, layout of, of the of the product page. There is there is other versions of this which I'll go into now. So as always, if you've watched any of my other tutorials, I always go into a little bit of detail of how I know this. How I know catalog product view is the, um, you know, for any beginners out there, how do I know? Right. So, always the same answer. You look in the Magento folder. So you look in vendor, Magento, module catalog, because that refers to mod, Magento underscore catalog uh, namespace. And then in the view folder, layout. And then you've got all the different layouts um, that control the, the catalog. So you've got category view in there, which is on one of my other videos, uh, featured in one of my other videos. But look, you've got you've actually got, so, so this is like the main, um, sorry, not that one. This one is like the main um, cat, uh, product page view. Uh, but you've got other ones here. You've got one specifically for a virtual product, which just adds a little extra block for virtual. One for a simple. These you never, you're not going to touch. Uh, you, you know, uh, the average, the average Magento front end dev building your average Magento two site, which we all know doesn't exist. There's no such thing as an average Magento two site. They're all exceptional. You're going to be looking at the this one every time. This is where you're going to find all of the stuff that you need. First thing we've done is obviously we've created this. So we're going to grab the sort of boilerplate code if you like. We're going to do first is we're going to add a body tag. As always, we're just going to sort of put all the standard, put put some standard um, boilerplate code in here, and then we're going to work from there. So, and it's this block here what I've created: global delivery message with the uh, identifier. Um, I used to prefer it when they were called slugs. Oh, the slug of global delivery message, <coughs> and this is enabled. I've just added it manually. I have got another tutorial that shows you how to add these bad boys programmatically. Uh, not going to go into that today, but it's a good one. So, as you can see, like I am working direct in the theme for this, for this customization. Could do it in a module, but I thought I'd just rip through it in 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 the theme. It's it's quick and dirty. You get you getting you getting what you need done. Um, if you was going to add the static block programmatically, it's probably best that you do it. In a, in a module. The concepts that I'm going to cover in terms of this layout file sort of do carry over to module development as well. Uh, obviously there's extra steps to actually setting up and building the module which I do go over in a number of tutorials which I'm sure you'll find um, if you look back in my uh, video library. So the thing you're going to do is, and I mentioned it before, is you're going to reference a container. You're not going to create a container which would be which would look more like this. You're not going to create a new container. Not not now. You're going to reference a container. Well, not doing this operation, you don't need a container. You need to reference a container, and then you're going to put a block straight in, because by definition, we're putting in a static block. So we don't need to wrap it in a container. Obviously, you can, but we, we don't need to um, for, for the purposes of this. So to get it in there, first of all, there's a handy little section if you like, of a page, which is just banner across the top, which is page top. So the first place we're going to add it is page top. Um, and it's a block. So we get the standard block. And now I need to make this a block with a closing tag. And the reason I need to make it a block with a closing tag is that I'm going to put a argument inside it. 
And we actually need arguments. And this is okay, an argument inside. And we're going to give the argument a name. And the name is going to be block ID because that's the type, that's the data I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass to it. Um, and this is going to not be an array, it's going to be a string. Um, and then the block ID we said was global um, delivery message. Um, right, okay, so for this, we don't need template for this type of block. We don't need template. We don't need as. We do need class. Now, the class we're going to sort of tap into is a default Magento class, which is Magento CMS block, and then namespace of block. So this is what we're going to be tapping into. And then this will enable us to get and we'll just add the um, reference in there as well, the, the block identifier in there as well. This will enable us to get the block and display it in page top. So, sort of, couldn't be simpler, really. There's no need to add any extra PHTML files at this stage or anything like that. If, if, you, if the block he was adding was a little bit more complicated or the design around the block was more complicated, then you might want to add a, um, a template file and then add the variable into a template file using a slightly different method. Uh, which I can show you, but this is um, the simplest way. So once we've got this set up, there, three orders over £50. And that's what's in this, as if I needed to prove it to you. There. Uh, there, is a, there is another way which is valid, but I just find it a little bit more hacky. So say I want to um, put this in the same place, I'll just save this out for the time being. Um, again, I could use a block. It's just a little bit more long-winded as well, to be fair. Um, and then we'd we'd add the block uh, using. Okay, so we'd add the block using something like Magento Framework View Element. Call it um, something unique. And then reference. template file and um, we we'll just call it deliver a PHTML for now um, and we're adding that into page top now what you what else you'd have to do which suddenly I'm adding more folders um, and then in there I mean t if I'm being honest you probably will end up adding Templates and then editing things on your in your catalog. I mean, it's not unusual, but I just think it's uh, a lot neater just to do it in layout. Um, delivery PHTML. That's what I called it. And then in this file, you just want to add some code that would look a little bit like this. So you call in the same namespace as what you did in your layout. Um, and then it was delivery. No, it was global delivery message. And this should give you the same result. Wait for it to burst. Wait for it to burst. Wait for it, look out. So yeah, I uh, I put a single call on. Let me know in the comments if you spotted that as I did it. Uh, right, so I just want to prove to you that that's that one. Um, so I'll just write in here um, a little extra bit of text. Yeah, there it is. So it is being called through through as the template, but as I say, I don't like that way. So I'm gonna scrap it. I'm gonna get rid, and we're gonna continue with one more um, little bit of. Inf
information. Um, I'm just going to go back to the one I had. Uh, right, what happens if we don't want that there, we want it here, under price specifically. Now, when we get when we start looking into the product page, this is the most complicated area, I reckon, uh, intricate area. So what we've got is, um, you know, we've got the price area um, in here, and it's all in product info price. Uh, sorry, it's all in product info main. We've got the title, we've got reviews, we've got price, um, and and the ad. To, then whichever ads cart form, and obviously this is a configurable product, so we have product ad to form. Um, and then the social links, which are the wish list and compare. Then obviously we've got media over flipped over on, on the other side. But um, essentially, we want to add some more HTML, if you like, or block inside this this block of of different elements. And we're going to try and add something between product info price and um, product ad form. Um, um, what you'll notice if you have watched any of my other tutorials is the method in which I'm doing that, the ways in which I'm doing this, and this is the beauty of Magento. Once you sort of, um, once you nail one part of it, it just floods. I mean, it, you can use the same strategy for for doing for doing a lot of different stuff, particularly in layout XML. So, product info main is is that is what we're going to target now. Again, I, I, people do say on the comments like, "How do you, how do you let me, how do you find that out? How do you know that it's product info main?" Well, I just know that because I've done it a lot of times, and you would, you would, um, you know, you pick, you, you learn these things, and sometimes, to be honest, I maybe forget it's product info main, but I look at this here, and this gives you a good clue that product info main, product hyphen info hyphen main is the class, and product info main as it is the name and and you can sort of just you start to recognize these things within magento now if i was to search for the class in the file product catalog product view look the html class is actually supplied to the template by a container which is product info main so it's not a foolproof way of navigating and finding things but you do get a feel for it and you can try a few things look for a class if you can't find the class have a look for a keyword or something you know if you can't exactly remember you know if you can't remember that it's product info price come in here and just search for price and you're only going to get a few different hits and, and, and you can just use your common sense to sort of find the one that you're after so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck this into product info main to demonstrate something so if I just chuck that in to product info main because I haven't specified its location it comes up at the bottom there but that's not what we want um, now we can use something on a block called a positional class, an after class. So you can use it either after or before. Um, and there's only two things, you know, two ways of doing this, after and before. But you'd be surprised how many different combinations you can you can get out of it. Now um, we can say in this situation, if we want it up near the price, we can say after. And we saw it in that template product info price. we saw it in that template there look product info price is what we're targeting and what we're saying is we want to insert our block here product info price um, after product info price so naturally it should well it should sit here underneath this line here there we go so it's it, it's in there brilliant really minor customizations I know but it, it, you know you can extrapolate it and you can do your own thing with what I've told you um, of how to get a static block or really you know extrapolate that out you can get any type of information I've showed you in that how to get a PHTML file to show which you don't necessarily have to have a static block in you could have whatever you want in um, I think in the next video I'm going to concentrate on this product page and we're maybe going to look at some product attributes and for that we'll probably look at uh, using a module to intersect some of these areas um, and use a upgrade script um, or an update script or an install script to insert a, a specific type of field something quite complicated like a, a multi-select field to show maybe icons iconography 
um, some icons on the, you know, get them outputting onto the product page. I think that might be useful because um, I think it'll cover a lot of uh, a lot of things. But for today, for that one, uh, nice and simple. Hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe, and I'll um, you know I'll continue my PT PDP series if you like. Uh, there you go. You've wrote me in. Um, great. Have a good one.